plaintiff, Joanna McGehee Workley, married the defendant after meeting him at his church. But now she believes this church is nothing but a cult. Joanna claims the church hid the defendant from her for three weeks, and as a result, their son was taken away. She's suing for emotional distress. Defendant Richard Workley admits that his church is controlling, but he credits them with helping him get sober. Richard wants to work things out with Joanna and is hoping they can get their life back on track. Start with you. Okay, well, sir, my husband's been involved in a Kool-Aid drinking third generation Jonestown cult, in my opinion, for 12 years. Sir, I was raised Catholic and I'm the youngest of 14 kids. And this, this church doesn't line up with anything. My daughter died 10 years ago, wow. started going to this church, met him. We have a child together. He's nine. And they're like, women, know your place. And they're, when I'd ask them questions, they'd go, go to your husband. I'm like, no, this doesn't line up for me at all. It blows my mind, but I was raised with common sense. And my mom was married 10 times. She called herself a Catholic fallen from grace, but she was a good woman and she taught me common sense. Your common sense said that there was cultish behavior there? The, for, for this church? Yes. Yeah. He's talking about Tupac and Biggie Smalls from, and doing it in a What's a saying sermon. what about them? And they're saying cuss words, sir. I mean, you can't do that. How old is the average age of the congregation? Well, they have like probably 10 people to their congregation. <laughs> So the average age is... Um, <laughs> it don't matter, ma'am. All right. I got your point. Yeah. There's I mean, 10 the, people, seriously. <laughs> seriously, sir. They prey on the downtrodden, the drunkards, the people who need love. They suck you in. I got sucked in. I found my husband. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not cool. This, this preacher said that I was a drug dealer. They raided my house. Uh, on the 3rd of September, my husband's like, I'm going to go confront them. I'm like, okay, let's go do this. Pray about it first. So we went there. The henchman came out. He was not talking about Jesus. I was in tears. My son and I got in the car and drove off. He's missing in action for three weeks. For three weeks? Three weeks. He was a closet drinker. He got sober. He was supposed to be gone a month. He was gone for a year. Okay, no communication. That's not liquor, ma'am. That's crack. <laughs> Go ahead. Something. Oh, my husband don't do crack, I guess. Well, you don't know what he does. <laughs> right? <laughs> when he's gone. If he's gone for a year, how you know what he's doing? Well, he if he's gone for three weeks, how church. you know what he's doing? Ain't that much liquor in the world, but it's enough crack. But Go he ahead. came back sober. And we got back yeah, together. Yeah, crackheads usually come back after it run out. <laughs> after it's run out. Go ahead. The cops like, filed a missing person report. And they arrested me on a bogus bench warrant from like five years ago. Because he was missing. He was missing. And they arrested and the, you. The cops called. Um, Hold on. The so when you went to say police, my husband is missing. Well, they, they grabbed they you was, and put you in the cell. <laughs> you better cell. leave that church alone. <laughs> you all right with me. I'm a believer. All right. All right. There you go. You I mean, talked up on some crazy, bad so. luck. Quiet. I'm getting to him. He's a pure man. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> Let me hear some background. She gave me one impression saying that you all got together in this church. She calls a cult. So what do you want to tell me? They, uh, they did help me get sober. They are quite controlling. Controlling in what way? They try and advise you on how to deal with your family? That we didn't really go through any counseling at all. But how do they control things? That's what I'm missing. They advise you or dem make demands on your lifestyle that you might not otherwise think or your wife might not otherwise feel is appropriate or normal. And you do it anyway because of some reason you feel you should. Maybe it's because they cleaned you up from a destructive lifestyle or an addiction and therefore you feel you owe them everything, including everything they tell you to do and every way they tell you to manage your life. Is that what you're getting feel, to? It's loyalty, yes, towards them, yes. Yeah. Based on what they did for you? Yes. They hit him out for three weeks. I had to get my fat butt on a huffy and ride to track him down at a members meeting. I don't understand half the stuff you say. Let me talk to you. <laughs> <this morning. laughs> Sir, I'm trying to make some sense. I don't know what you said over there. 
<laughs> has it caused family complications for you? Yes, it has. In what way? By staying with them instead of, of uh, going Trying back to Trying to attend to your family in a way that pleases your wife. Does your child complain about anything relating to the church? He uh, wouldn't come back to the house, Your Honor. My kid's in CPS right now. The dog and the kitten are gone. Why? He wouldn't come back. They, they called, the, the police called him to ask them to come back, and the pastor said, no, he's not coming back. Come, he's divorcing I'm you. I'm missing something. Is this when you were in jail? No, or? this was the day that they put falsely arrested me. He right. would not come back to the house for his dog, his kitten, or his child. So I'm saying they did keep you in jail. He, my son is still in Child Protective Services. I'll get him back in a month. But all this could have been prevented if he was a man, a Christian man, as the Bible says. He chose his church over his family. So they called him with taking your wife, come get your child. And him and the pastor said no. Sir, did that happen? Yes, it did. What reason did the pastor give you? Why did he say he felt that was reasonable advice? He really didn't. He didn't explain. You didn't demand an explanation. You didn't say, well, why, pastor? You think that's a good idea to leave my kids, pastor? You didn't have him explain? No. See, that is kind of cultish. <laughs> when you accept the demands of a clergy leader that may be against your own uh, well-being or the well-being of your family because you believe in that clergy leader's word, because I'm sure he didn't go in the Bible and say, God said, don't pick up that child. This was him. This was a man. Mm -hmm. That was a mistake. Don't you think? Yeah. Okay. What other type of activities do you engage in for the church or at the church? Are you a volunteer every night, every day? How much work do you do at the church? How are you so close? Tell me something. Are there more than 10 members? No. No more than 10 members? Does he control everyone's life? Not everybody's, obviously. Because they're all Me. homeless and get a check. Many of them are homeless? Okay. All right, so how do you all proselytize? How do you get more members in? They go out, they preach. And that's folks to come? And nobody comes? No. <laughs> yes, that obviously says they something about the church. <laughs> yeah, it says a little something. <laughs> Kids out it says a little something. Them people. 10 people, how many out of my family? <laughs> All That's right, sir. I believe you and your pastor and your church alone. But pray that God will reveal what he would have you do as a Christian man and read the Bible and pray for understanding. All right? The pastor is a man. And that's what they say when they get in trouble. When they're all right, when things are going, in, I'm divine. <laughs> and when you catch him up, well, you know, I'm just a man like anybody else. <laughs> made of clay. I'm just a man made of clay. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, wait till he get caught up. Then he'd just be a man, that pastor, right now. Well, he's, he's a year older than me. I remember right. when he went through the program. Emotional distress is for the child. That sounds like what it gone. might be. What else? Uh, the fact that I'm still trying to get my child back. I'm getting, as of today, we're getting evicted from the house, so I have to move. And he, he needs serious deprogram, deprogramming counseling. I told him, is it the marriage or the church? So I'm going to give him a chance because I love him, but he is definitely shaken by this mind-numbing people. And it's not all of them, but he's a very loyal, quiet man, easily influenced, and he feels like he owes them something because he doesn't drink, but he's drinking their Kool-Aid. All I know, ma'am, is that is an extreme example of Christianity, sir, telling you not to go and pick up your child from the police. Would you at least think about going to some outside counseling, maybe, yes. and get an understanding? Can we help get you that? In fact, can we help get you all some family counseling? That would be great. All right. Cool. All right. Because... You, you know, other than your criminal behavior, you seem like a good, 
<laughs> she's like a good mother and a good wife. And you want Thank your you, family, sir. and you say you love your husband. You're not well, leaving. Well, the Bible. Him. I, did, I didn't marry until I was 37. My mom was married 10 times. She was a Catholic fallen from grace. So I have five she kids. She fallen from four. grace 10 times. <laughs> <laughs> she was successful, but that wasn't the type of Christianity I wanted. So when I married, I decided at 37 to marry for life. I'm the first fat woman he's been with, and he's the first short man I've been with. God has a sense of humor. All righty. So, I don't know where to go from there. So, 2500 for extreme and extraordinary behavior that led to extreme emotional distress. Typically, emotional distress is not granted to couples unless there is physical violence because that is very extreme. And so I say that to say that's typically the standard, but this is very extreme to leave your child there with the police instead of coming to get him and and the distress that she suffered as a result (laughs) and the child. All right, ma'am, judge me for the plaintiff, and we're going to get you all some family counseling. You are awesome, sir. uh, Nice meeting you. This isn't something. This is troubling. This is troubling. Have a good day. Judge me for the plaintiff. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, I hope that we uh, move out of this house and get the help that we both need as a family, get our kid back, and build build back our life. In a different church, he's going to go to the Catholic church now. And we're going to let God lead the way. We're going to work on our marriage as long as, for as long as it takes to get it right. 